The Cincinnati Bengals had one of the strangest seasons in the NFL last season. They lost their first two games. They lost three of their first four games, and then they lose Joe Burrow back on the 16th of November. Jake Browning comes in and plays extremely well. The next game, he threw for 227 yards, but then 354, 275, 324, 335. I mean, Browning was absolutely slinging the ball. And then the next two games sort of went back to reality. The game against the Chiefs was so close, 197 yards, and then the win against the Browns, he had to just throw for 156. But the point being is that the Bengals were not supposed to win nine games. With a slow start that they had in losing Burrow, their season was supposed to be over, but it wasn't. They played extremely well. You've got to give credit to Zach Taylor for that. If the Bengals had made the playoffs, he definitely would have been in the coach of the year consideration. But nonetheless, he is one of the better play callers in the league. And it was clear that the Bengals had a lot of holes to fix on both sides of the ball. They were not that great defensively, if we're being honest. A lot of it was just due to the injuries and things like that. And young players not exactly progressing the way that they wanted to. The thing for the Bengals was that they just needed more playmakers. They needed more explosiveness because... Last season, the Bengals were not an explosive team. It's just that the tight end position has been a weakness for the Bengals for years now. They wanted to address it in the draft last year in 2023, but Dalton Kincaid won a couple of picks before them. And believe it or not, the Bills actually credited the Bengals for their decision to draft Dalton Kincaid because when those two teams played in the playoffs, Stephon Diggs was absolutely silent. He was getting double teamed. He was just getting boxed. He finished with like 46 yards or something, 40 yards or something like that. So the Bills, they go out there, they draft Kincaid to get a playmaker out there, a guy that can win his routes and find the seams and his get open. And Kincaid had an amazing season. He looks like a future star in this league. And the Bengals, they realized as well that, hey, look, we haven't had an explosive tight end all of these years that Joe Burrow has been here. I mean, you look from 2020 to 2023, guess how many catches a Bengals tight end has with 20 plus air yards give you guys like five seconds to think about it all right so the answer is one one Bengals tight end has had one catch of 20 plus air yards the past three seasons of course 2020 and 2023 and by the way I know a lot of people are going to be like oh of course the Bengals weren't explosive they lost Joe Burrow for a lot of the season they were still 23rd in explosiveness and offense with Burrow that's just not gonna get it done but Mike Gazicki they brought him in on a one-year deal he's six foot six 249 pounds he has 16 catches with 20 plus air yards from 2020 to 2023 15 more than the entire Bengals tight end room in that span Gazicki is one of the most electric athletic dynamic tight end prospects that the game of football has ever seen from 1987 to 2018 when Gazicki was drafted he had a 9.97 RAS out of a possible 10 score. I mean, that is almost perfect. That is third out of 783 tight ends from 1987 to 2018. And the thing for Gazicki is he hasn't played with a good quarterback. Yeah, I know he played with Tua. Once again, he hasn't played with a good quarterback. He's played with you know, Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi and Jacoby Brissett. That's just not going to get it done. Joe Burrow has been waiting for a tight end that he can trust, someone that can win routes. Because the thing for the Bengals is their offensive line isn't the greatest. And it has been since Burrow came into the league. I get it, it's improved and it's going to keep improving. They brought in Trent Brown, who we'll get into in a second here. The goal for the Bengals is to win your route so Burrow can get rid of the ball as quickly as possible because he's so accurate. He's so good at going through his progressions, his reads, getting the ball where it needs to be. Burrow is one of the most accurate quarterbacks that the game of football has ever seen going into the start of last season he actually led the nfl all time in completion percentage over drew Brees, which is just remarkably impressive so that's the thing for the bengals is yes their offensive line hasn't been the best around burrow but what if it was because in the past two years when holding the ball for at least three and a half seconds burrow leads the nfl in passer rating touchdowns per attempt and touchdown to interception ratio he's also third in epa per drop back and completion percentage so you can see that when burrow has time and he's able to hold the ball he is the best quarterback in the nfl to do it it's just more often than not he doesn't have that amount of time and he realizes it that's why burrow gets rid of the ball so quickly but i think this upcoming season the bengals are going to be a more explosive team they brought in mike Gazicki, they brought in trent brown they brought in zach moss not to mention that the team has their draft picks they've got their pick at 18 they've got their second rounder they can potentially add in another weapon or they could just bolster the offensive line maybe they add to the defensive line 
cornerback even could be in play here for the Bengals. I didn't think their cornerbacks played exactly up the par last season, and that's exactly why they went out there and also they brought in the safety uh, Geno Stone from the Baltimore Ravens because their safeties just gave up too many big plays. So the Bengals have had an amazing offseason. A lot of people forget about them because Joe Burrow missed a lot of the season. The Ravens had the best record in the NFL. Lamar Jackson won his second MVP award. I get it, but if I'm betting on a team to win the AFC North next season, it's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals. They're just way too good when at full strength. And last season, it wasn't even just Joe Burrow that was injured. It was just key players all around missing time. And that's a large reason why the Bengals were not able to overcome their sole start one and four. They had a chance. Legitimately, the Bengals had a serious chance to make the playoffs despite that, but they were never able to do it. Another addition to the Bengals was Sheldon Rankins. He's essentially going to be the DJ Reader replacement. The thing for Rankins, though, is he's not the best in the run game. He's great in the pass game. He is going to be 30 next month, which I don't really think matters at all. I mean, it's a two year deal for twenty six million dollars. Rankins is very good and he's going to be a key on passing downs, but it's just you need guys behind him. Who else is on this depth chart? I think BJ Hill is going to be the backup. He is actually good in the run game, but just more consistency, more depth. Of course, the trenches is where you wouldn't lose football games. So let's start off with Trent Brown. I love this addition. It's a one year deal. He can play right tackle. He can play left tackle. He was one of the best in the NFL last season going one on one. He's just extremely powerful. He's got long arms, a good wingspan. The issue is, is that it's a one year deal, which is an issue because he's not a future cornerstone at the tackle position. It's just a veteran on a one year deal to try to help you win, which is fine, but you need someone behind him to develop. And this is a great tackle class to do that. In terms of Joe Mixon and Zach Moss, this is extremely exciting because I am a Colts fan and I saw a lot of Moss. He was amazing last season. He had 11 runs of 20 or more yards. Mixon had five 20 plus yard runs despite having 74 more rushing attempts. Moss is 26, he has 484 career carries. He also forced more missed tackles and was a better pass blocker than Mixon. You talk about yards above expectation, Moss was fifth, Mixon was 27. I mean, Mixon had 257 carries for 1,034 yards, that's four yards per carry. Just wasn't exactly the best. The rookie Chase Brown who was behind him looked more, looked more explosive. And it was clear to the Bengals that they wanna give Brown more touches and they want just a more explosive player and Moss out there that can do more things. I didn't think Mixon looked great last season. I was honestly advocating for him to get less touches and it just seemed like his time was running out. And the Bengals did him a huge favor by trading him to the Texans because they got him over to a, first of all, a contender in the league with CJ Stroud and when healthy, a good offensive line and good culture. So Mixon definitely got the benefit of the doubt there, but hey, really doesn't matter. I mean, Mixon did a lot for this team. I mean, prime Joe Mixon was as good as any other running back in the NFL. He was so fun to watch. I'm looking at Moss. I mean, the dude had 794 yards and five touchdowns in 14 games. You also have to understand that he was the backup to Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor is one of the most dynamic running backs in the NFL. So if Moss had played the whole season, he probably leads the NFL or not. He wouldn't have beat Christian McCaffrey, but he would have been right up there with Christian McCaffrey and Derrick Henry and those boys. He probably would have been somewhere in the middle if I had to guess on it. Bengals, they re-signed Trayvon Williams. So that means that Moss, Williams, and Brown have a lower cap hit than Mixon was set to have for the 2024 season at 8.9 million. That is just remarkably impressive. I would take those three running backs over Mixon any single day. I mean, there's just no question about it. In terms of Geno Stone, probably the most underrated free agent signing for the Bengals this off season. It's a two year contract worth 15 million and a 6 million signing bonus. I mean, he's not even 25 years old yet. He's coming off of a season where he had what was it, six interceptions, I wanna say? Stone had seven interceptions in 2023 and he's only the 11th highest paid safety in the game. I was wondering how did he go for such a cheap contract when he ranked seventh out of 104 qualifying safeties in coverage grade last year according to PFF? Well, it's because of those 104 qualifying safeties, Stone's 21% missed tackle rate ranked 95th his rate is 18.8 for his career. So he does struggle making tackles. He definitely misses a lot of them. And that's something that has to be accounted for. But you have to realize that the Bengals issue last season wasn't missing tackles. It was the fact that they gave up way too many big plays down the field. They had some of the worst safety play in the league, of course. They ended up releasing one of their starting safeties. And then their other starting safety, who they used a first round pick on a couple of years ago, just was never able to get it going. And I think they might end up moving him, talking about Daxon Hill, into the slot. Maybe they end up just using him on the boundary. I have no clue, um, of course, what they're gonna do with him. But 
I do know that the defensive coordinator for the Bengals said that he would like to see Daxton Hill get good at one thing. And that's something that we really need to talk about is the Bengals, they let go of Von Bell and they let go of Jesse Bates. And I think the Bengals thought that they'd be able to get past it, but they just never were able to. And that's exactly why safety was the really the biggest emphasis for the Bengals coming into the offseason. They, they used a lot of money on it. And um, I wouldn't even be surprised if they use a day three pick on it, uh, which could be in maybe the fourth round or something like that i don't think any safeties are going in the first two rounds in this draft so it's just not a deep safety class which is why it was crucial for the Bengals to address it in free agency in terms of other moves so drew sample tanner hudson trayvon williams cody ford akeem davis gather if i'm pronouncing that correctly which i'm probably not and wide receiver trent and Irwin. all these guys are back t higgins returned on a franchise tag he did request a trade but i find it hard to believe that the Bengals are going to trade him and if they do it certainly should be a first round pick t is one of the best wide receivers in football looks like jake browning and cal dominus were brought back on restricted free agent tenders but with that 18th pick for me it's got to be a tackle somebody who can slide immediately into that right tackle position i get trent browns there but just to have a franchise cornerstone would be huge so some options could be Olu Fashionu, JC Latham, Talise Fuaga, Amarius Mims. More realistically, I think Amarius Mims is the best option for the Bengals. Like best case scenario would be he falls there at 18 and the Bengals scoop him up. The reason for that is he's 6'7 and 3'4. He's 340 pounds. He also moves extremely well. The issue for Mims is that he only has eight starts. I mean, we're talking about a guy who played 297 snaps in his junior year um, before that. 385 snaps so a guy that just doesn't have a lot of starts and yeah even though you didn't have many starts but what'd you do in those starts he was fantastic Mims was electric he was dynamic I mean in the national championship game he only gave up two pressures I believe at the top of my head yeah two pressures in the national championship game and that wasn't even in his final season so I think Mims might be the best tackle in this draft is he this is the, the highest floor absolutely not that would be Joe Alt but in terms of who has the highest ceiling I think Amarius Mims is the first guy to come to my mind. JC Latham is another guy that potentially could be there. I just don't see a world where he's there at 18, though. I mean, this guy could be a top 10 pick, top 12 pick. He's just way too good. He tested well at the combine. To me, the Bengals should be targeting either Amarius Mims or if he's there at 18, for some reason, Byron Murphy, the second out of Texas, who come horns. If he is there at 18, that is a no brainer because he is incredible against the run and the Bengals need that. They also need depth. 